I'm Matt Bichard with REIT.com and I'm here in Santa Monica, California at the headquarters of Wilshire Associates. Wilshire is among the 10 largest consultants in terms of assets under advisement. Joining me to talk a little bit about target date funds is Cleo Chang, Managing Director with Wilshire Associates. Cleo is also the head of the investment research group of Wilshire Funds Management. So Cleo, let's start by talking about how Wilshire views the purpose of target date funds and how you expect such funds to grow into the future. We really see the role and purpose of Target Aid Fund to help investors, individual investors in particular, to manage their asset allocation portfolio, to change the risk profile of that retirement asset over time, which most investors don't care to do on their own. And uh, based on a research recently published by Casey Cork and Associates, Target Aid Fund are becoming the primary a vehicle adopted in DC plans and they expect target date funds to attract more than 80% of the inflows into DC plans in the next decade. And what are the guiding principles that determine how Wilshire approaches the design of target date funds? The guiding principle we use really is something that we leverage from the decades of defined benefit consulting that we've been doing at Wilshire Associates and really looking at the retirement liability of individuals on the defined, bene a defined contribution plan versus the defined benefit plan. So our glide path focuses on in capturing the retirement liability and factor that into the equity and fixing on split of the glide path. And speaking of glide path construction, why does Wilshire believe that real estate investment through REIT should be a part of that? We think that any asset class that has the potential to either uh, improve diversification, risk diversification, or return enhancement should be considered uh, along the glide path and REIT has both of those qualities so we think it's prudent to include REITs along the glide path. And can you elaborate on what role Wilshire thinks that REITs should play in, in longer dated funds, shorter dated funds, and those for those that are already in retirement? Based on our research, what we're finding is that for those longer dated target date funds, uh, for example, have 20 or more years until retirement, we're seeing sort of a mid-teen range as the optimal allocation, so say about 15%. As the portfolio moves towards retirement, at retirement we're seeing that allocation between 5 and 10 percent. And once you move 10 years into retirement, we see that allocation diminish to 1 to 3 percent. And what are the key attributes of real estate investment through REITs that, that Wilshire thinks are of the greatest importance? There are really three primary favorable attributes we see. First and foremost is the stable income that REITs generate. Second, second is the capital appreciation uh, potential associated with REITs. And last but not least is the inflation hedging aspect uh, associated with real estate properties or any other real assets. And Cleo, does Wilshire consider REITs to be an alternative asset class or a separate and distinct asset class? That's a great question, Matt. You know, I think the industry's definition of alternative uh, can be very different. So, you know, we don't uh, mandate whether REITs should be an alternative or not. But the way Wilshire Funds Management treats REITs is we consider it as a distinct asset class and it's included as the baseline asset class in our general asset allocation portfolios as well as target date funds. And given that the correlation of REIT returns with other asset returns increased during the financial crisis and remains elevated, how, if at all, does that affect Wilshire's view of diversification benefits that are typically available from REIT investment? I think it's important for us to all remember that during the most recent financial crisis, we saw correlation spike across all asset classes. So it wasn't really a, an event that was particularly associated with REITs and REITs only. During our research period, which is 1975 to 2010, so using that 35-year time period as a base, uh, baseline scenario, um, REITs actually have a fairly low correlation across other asset classes. It has a 0.17 correlation with bar cap ag and a 0.66 correlation with U.S. small cap. What's interesting is during the same time period, if you look at the correlation between U.S. large cap stocks and U.S. small cap stocks, the correlation is actually 0.88, so almost 0.9 but you rarely hear asset allocators ex excluding small cap due to its high correlation with large caps. So as long as we believe there are favorable correlation, therefore diversification benefits, REITs should be considered in any asset allocation portfolio. And when adding new asset classes to, to a target date fund, it's often a matter of shelf space. 
So when REITs are added as, as a result of your optimizations, which asset classes are reduced and, and if so, why? The sourcing of allocation to REITs really comes from different asset classes across different points on the glide path. With the longer dated uh, target date funds, we see primary the sourcing comes from various equity asset classes. As we move towards and into retirement, we see the sourcing REITs coming from primarily fixed income asset classes. So really a, a very balanced sourcing of REITs along the glide path over time. Great. Cleo, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Matt. For more on target date funds, and to read a copy of Wilshire's latest report, be sure to visit REIT.com.